I want to thank all the state partners that are in the, in the, off, in the room today, and uh, we've had a lot of cooperation over the last 10 years getting states on board, getting veterinary practices trained, and, uh, and uh, now animal owners logging into our system. So. As you all know, a quick background, we're based in Ames, Iowa. We started in 1999 with a pilot in the state of Florida. Uh, we had success with uh, our first pilot, and that grew. Um, so now we have certificates of veterinary inspection available for all states, and uh, moved quite a few animals, and that continues to grow each month. And uh, we have uh, SLP signed. Uh, well, actually, we have the 50th states, uh, all 50 states signed. This is for 19, from 2010, kind of a quick summary. Uh, we've got three more states that uh, have signed with our GoPass program, and that's the equine passport. Um, and that's, that's allowing uh, animals to move freely between the uh, states that have been uh, signed up for the GoPass, the three regions within the U.S. Uh, EVRX is our prescription system, and so for food animal production, we have a, um, uh, a prescription system. We use the same FDA uh, uh, technology that uh, we developed with our electronic veterinary feed directive, which has been out for about five years. So we now have uh, products from the Amer North American Compendium that fit within the EVRX system. And then we were a software company of the year last year. Next slide. Uh, this shows our architecture. It's a web-based, we're totally a web-based model uh, where we connect veterinarians and state animal health officials and diagnostic laboratories, over 100 labs now, uh, all 50 states, and a uh, growing number of veterinarians in the thousands. Uh, it's growing every month. And uh, we're just pleased with the, uh, the feedback and the, the, uh, the continued usage of ICVIs, we call them OCVIs, uh, that we have within our system. Uh, this shows the, the uh, progression of the states, the bar chart, um, uh, we, when starting with, uh, with, with Florida and then adding a couple of states and then expanding from there. So we started just after the dot-com uh, bust, and so this really indicates that uh, a, lot of, a lot of people are wondering, well, are you going to be around next next month, we're going to be around in six months, and uh, we're still here, and we're growing and adding people, and uh, it's been, uh, it's been a, a satisfying and gratifying to see the, the success and the use of our system throughout the U.S. Um, next slide. Uh, this shows the uh, certificates that we offer, so from a uniform, the presentation is really about the uniformity of uh, ICBIs, and our, again, our OCBIs is our name, Official Certificate of Veterinary Inspection. Uh, that was our first release, and then we added equine infectious anemia certificates. And I'll show examples of those in uh, coming slides and lab connectivity as well. Uh, the EVRX is our, is our prescription system. Uh, GoPass, it just shows you the offerings. Some people think of that we're a Coggins company or we're a health certificate company, but we offer quite a few uh, in our uh, applications in our SaaS model, our software as a service, service uh, web-based model. Uh, the GoPass, as I mentioned, uh, veterinary feed directives and the core state reporting. So you can log in, uh, states can log in and do a lookup by ID number, by species, by uh, time frame, by purpose of movement. Uh, so we have pretty extensive uh, standardized reporting. The species that are authorized uh, that, we, that we support, uh, the standardized process are, are the following. Uh, so you can see we cover a pretty good uh, array of species. And for uniformity, um, uh, I did speak to AVMA's uh, ALC committee, and I think that uh, you know the, the effort of trying to devise one form for all species is uh, is uh, is really the direction that some people are trying to go. Uh, within the web-based model, of course, we can dynamically generate these. These are standardized, but uh, we can dynamically generate fields that are required by species, rather than having uh, all these fields in a, a very cumbersome form that uh, that uh, has a lot more fields and not more spaces on there than you need. So within our model, we are able to actually uh, condense that and make it relevant to that species. And this shows you, of course, the example has been brought up today in, in other meetings about the legibility, about the identification of an animal. This, I'm just showing you the horse example today, uh, how, how, how this form goes from a veterinary practice to a diagnostic laboratory back to the veterinary practice, then distributed by hand to the uh, horse owner. And uh, within our application, the next slide shows you the actual uh, web-based format and the clarity of the animal from a, from a, from a photo, uh, three, three, three views of the animal, um, but a narrative description. Uh, it ties the animal record with a, with a test, so it, it uniquely standardizes the method of, 
with 100 labs across the country, how we communicate with them from a veterinary practice to the lab, lab back to the veterinary practice, lab to the state animal health official. Next slide. And, uh, and I might mention uh, that well, this just shows a uh, photographic example of uh, the current process, field, vet office, lab, vet office, client that I just described. Uh, GVL process year one is the second row and global vet link process year two uh, where the photos are already loaded up in the system. This just shows you a very quick how we can uh, get the animal and information uh, uh, real time and, and ultimately paperless now through the to the uh, system because uh, of these signatures. Next slide, we'll find um, the ICVI, the, uh, our equivalent of the ICVI is the, is the OCVI that we started 10 years ago. Uh, we standardized with the state seal, the top uh, for each state. Um, and our license agreement allows us to use a state seal for every state, I think, except for one, uh, where we use our own seal for that one state. But we have um, the top right-hand corner uh, identifies the year uh, the certificate was created in the state of origin of the animals, and then a unique ID number for that uh, for that OCVI. So that provides uh, the information. Then this uh, bottom uh, portion is the uh, e-signature technology. Uh, that we that we have approved by USDA, we follow FDA regulations for that, uh, for our, our other products that we have. Uh, so that secures the documents, and uh, so that can be sent without having. And the green check mark is one visual indicator that that document has is still intact and has not been altered. Okay, uh, and of course we do pets. We do other other species that uh, include the test vaccination information. Uh, not real relevant to this committee, but just shows you an example of other types of things. Okay, uh, and then the I, the ID numbers that shows you an Iowa uh, certificate for bovine uh, shows you the brucellosis tuberculosis test information, and then the animal ID uh, in this category, the 840 numbers. The, those can be uploaded into our system within seconds. Uh, just we just uh, uh, get those as a text file from. Um, uh, veterinarians get that from their clients, or they can upload them from a text file uh, into our system and uh, within a matter of seconds, uh, and they can check for duplicates. So it's a very efficient system. Um, I know we have people that are using the system that have pages and pages of certificates because they have all their IDs uploaded. So they're moving four or five trailer loads of animals. They can, uh, they sometimes do create one uh, for multiple loads, but they have all the ID numbers uh, on that document. Okay. So the, why the veterinarians use our system, this is the, really the, the big thing. That I, uh, the fax machine, uh, you think about fax machines, they, they, the first invent, invention, the first patent for a fax machine, a fax machine was in 1842. Uh, fax machines became uh, popular, became commercially used in 1980. And someone asked one time why, uh, you know, when they first bought a fax machine, how, why didn't fax machines take off faster? Well, there was no one to send a fax to. You have a fax machine and uh, the rest of the world doesn't? Well, you have to wait for a while. Well, within the web-based technology, I really believe that uh, we're in an era of technology. When I present uh, and our team presents to uh, veterinary students uh, across the country, they want, they're already wired, as we all know, with smartphones. They're, they already are, have grown up on the web. Uh, and they are hungry to bring technology to a practice and make a difference. And I've seen time and time again where a young vet uh, out of school or an intern comes into a practice and they turn it around. They, they say, why are you still using paper? Uh, and we have an example of a practice in Missouri where they, they, an intern went to a practice in another state and large equine practice and said, why are you still using paper? My parents have been using Global Valley for the past five years and, and we hadn't converted within two weeks. So it's one of those things where it's an evolution, as we all know, um, uh, People my age, older, uh, may not gravitate to the internet as quickly as others or technology, and you have a process in place. So we're trying to find it, um, and we've seen this happen again and again, is that uh, our team uh, helps educate. Uh, we do support. We have, we have a native Spanish speaker. We have, you call in the Global Vet Link, you can get a real person that, that talks the language of veterinary practices. So I think that's been part of our success. Uh, a big part of it is that we do been over at backwards to try to help make sure that people get online and can use our system and know how to use it. And we've got 10,000 plus uh, 
animal owners now accessing their data through our system. So that's another level of support that we provide, and that we do use in more and more Spanish all the time with our with our uh, support uh, team. So it's very interesting how it's evolved over the years uh, to be able to allow delivery of data real time from a vet practice to their clients. So the time efficiency they use it, they can reduce the paper, they can reduce the uh, they can improve the clarity of the information from the vet practice to the client, uh, whether it be ID, visual ID, or or physical ID or, or a photo, um, and uploading the VIDs to the system. Veterinarians love that. Once they do it the first time, they, they, they say, well, why do I ever write down the IDs anymore? Because we can upload them electronically and they're searchable electronically. And of course, prevention of fraud and liability, because when you complete a paper certificate, when that goes out, who knows what happens to it. Uh, within our system, you, you always have that validation of what was electronically signed online if there's ever any question of uh, that being altered if the paper document travels with the animals that you can reference back to the online signed version and you know that, that that's the one that the veterinarian committed to. Next. Uh, then they're signed again electronically with confidentiality uh, and that's sent to the state of origin, state of destination. Veterinarians don't have to even think about it. Automatically goes to the owner. Uh, if they so desire, it's their, it's their option. It goes to the state of origin, destination, laboratory. It's all standardized. So the uniformity for all 50 states is in place and working, and it's it's very um, it's it's scalable. So we're at, as we're adding more uh, clients. Okay, and then this just shows uh, the certificate types. Uh, veterinarian logs in and can choose the type of the certificate that they want by state. Uh, for example, in Florida, we provide the the uh, pet lemon law system. Uh, option and uh, the other states won't see that. So in Iowa, we provide a preconditioning calf uh, cert certification program, and other states won't see that. So it really varies um, upon the state that you're in. Uh, then the e-signature is the last step: is the, is the username and password of that uh, veterinarian uh, by a veterinarian within that practice. Um, we don't allow veterinarians to sign up for our system; uh, just go to, to go online and just create an account, they go through, we have SOPs in place that we provide to uh, FDA, to USDA, the two oversight agencies with the regulatory uh, oversight uh, in the states as well, uh, so that they know, we know that who the, vet, the veterinary practice is, uh, they, we have e-signatures, we have signatures, signatures uploaded in a written signature, written form, uh, legal form, that they attest that that is their real signature. Their license number, their accreditation number, we go through a, a series of steps before they're even activated. They have to be trained. We receive their payment information, including credit cards. So we do have quite a bit of uh, information before a veterinary practice is activated. And so we maintain that security in the states. Obviously, have you have the ability to val validate that, too. And the MyVet link is the last part where we, uh, we actually deliver the documents directly to the animal owner. Uh, so there's a paperless, uh, real-time ability, ability for that information to get to the owner, to the client. Okay. And the watermark, uh, what makes our system our authentic is the watermark and the secure electronic signatures, of course, and the, the unique uh, ID number, and if in doubt, compare it to the electronic form. Okay. And the sample OCVI, so you can see the watermark across this doesn't, didn't come across very well, but there's a very clear watermark when it's printed. When I blew it up in the size of this, it doesn't show it very well, but that's a diagonal watermark. Next, please. Uh, and the, uh, state regulations is where we provide um, a transition. So when you are completing a certificate of entry inspection online to know what that state entry requirements are as of today, you try to find the most current information. Our website, we do uh, link to the state reg links. We, and it's, Telephone number. They can go to this site, to our site. It's, it's the most, uh, it's the most heavily used uh, page on our web application or website, and this is available to the pub public. So you can go there and find the current phone number, fax number, reg link, news link for each state. Next, and then uh, so we link directly to that page, and uh, we're able to provide the information by species, whatever is relevant to that state, whatever that state decides to, uh, in the format that they decide to publish it. Next. And we can also link to other sources within that state. Okay. And then uh, what, do, what does uh, the OCVI uniformity mean to animal health officials and in industry? We do increase efficiency. Uh, so in the, in the light of the theme for my talk today is that we really do 
reduce uh, the phone calls, the phone inquiries, uh, uh, the clarity of data on OCVIs. The, the, there's no forms to print or inventory by the veterinary practices or by the state animal health officials. Uh, reduce the printing and postage expenses and offer paperless solution. Uh, billing support, for example, with Texas Animal Health Commission, uh, we, we collect fees from um, the uh, veterinarians in the state that use the system based on their, their uh, fee that they access, they access to the, for the use of uh, health certificates in the state. So there's a paper as well as an electronic fee, and we collect that and write them a check every month. So I think that uh, Dr. Ellis and others here are probably appreciative of that. Let's just keep going on the next one. Then we provide sample education tools. And the next slide will, uh, uh, training, training support I mentioned numerous times. In the last section, I want to talk about looking forward, uh, permits, and the next uh, bullet point is our smart system. So our smart system is what we have a uh, conference call. We had a conference call last week. We have one next Monday at, uh, 8 a, or at 10 a.m. Central. And I'll resend that uh, email out uh, to all state animal health officials. The, the smart system on the next slide, what we do is we, again, mention that we, that we require for veterinarians to do a, a proper job to move animals into your state. They need to know what, the, of course, the import regulations are. In today's world, they need to go to a website, make a phone call, uh, have experience with your state, knowing nothing's changed, and they complete whatever ID requirements, et cetera. Uh, as, a, as the new ruling comes out, the animal uh, traceability ruling comes out, and it gets more confusing to private practitioners until the system's been going for a while. Uh, we anticipate uh, that this the smart system could have a lot of value because it will validate current requirements based on states' ability to log in and, uh, and adjust the import regulations real time. So if there is a disease emergency, there is a new requirement, uh, you could post it to your website, but will people go to your website? Will they go to the right part of your website and see where that new regulation uh, change is? Uh, we think it will be much easier just within Global VetLink, log in, create a certificate. You're choosing species bovine. You're moving uh, dairy heifers from point A to point B, 16-month-old uh, heifers. What's the current requirements for ID? What's the current requirements for, for test vaccinations? Uh, any other statements that are required, requirements for entry? So that's what the GVL Smart System is, and so we're trying to get the word out to people uh, is a, a system that will require some state funds to go uh, to build that uh, and to maintain it, but dividing it by the number of states that uh, we think will participate, it won't be a huge amount of money uh, for the states, but it will be, a again, a way to build on the uniformity that we've established and communicate uh, uh, information and improve data quality and have a more unified way of communicating what the requirements are uh, by all species that you're dealing with. Next slide. And so we go uh, this route to the uh, state's web page or the next uh, page, we, uh, and then we, final delivery would be through the my, myvetlink.com uh, method. And I think we can skip to the, yeah, the last slide right there. Uh, for example, when, when the veteran goes through the process of creating a health certificate, uh, they get to the additional information, we have a lot of information, a lot of uh, statements that are standardized that are in there by species. And so this would actually tell them which uh, statements are required for entry of those animals into, into their state, again, with the GVL smart system. And uh, they've chosen purpose of movement. They've chosen all the different, uh, the, the main criteria, then it would filter down and, and let them know exactly what's required. So this will be the model as we're moving on. We have a pilot going, uh, we're hoping to establish a pilot, we have agreement with USDA and we're trying to get our first country hooked up so we do our, our second country I should say, hooked up so we can do a pilot. So this model in the U.S. will be what we'll eventually provide to uh, our two trading partners for movement of animals in the validation process. And uh, the benefits of the system, the smart system we designed for permits as well as CVIs. So if there's a permitting requirement, there's an emergency situation, permits would have that same validation um, methodology built into it rather than just the OCVI. Accessible anywhere. We're developing the um, Android application, so we have a, uh, that system will, will be available on a browser-based uh, smartphone, and uh, we have a lot of other things that we're doing in the smartphone environment that um, I think are pretty revolutionary, uh, and there's some technology around that that I think you'll 
find that we're integration with other providers, uh, uh, we're, that, uh, we're integrating with more practice management software and just embedded within their application. We're going to make it easier for veterinarians and for people to use our system. So I think we're pretty well done. Uniform, nationwide communication, cut staff and calls, calls because I know the state veterinarians say that we get, I get calls after hours, weekends, I, I handle them. Staff can't. Um, just because we don't want to have to pay overtime, all of your budgets are strained. So we're looking at the smart system being able to reduce the strain on your staff and on your, on your weekends so that they know where to go to get the right information.